machines move quickly. Then along came Rodney Brooks, the inventor of the bottom-up approach to robotics, which mimics the behavior of creatures at the bottom of the food chain. Back in the early 80s, robots were very, very slow. They were connected to mainframe computers. They would compute for minutes at a time before the robot could move even a meter. And if anything changed in the world in the meantime, they were completely lost what was going on. And I looked around at insects, and insects, you know, could fly around at a meter or so per second. They could uh, avoid getting eaten by some, by a bird. They could chase prey there after they could go through mating behaviors. So it seemed to me that maybe we were organizing the computation the wrong way, in the way we were approaching robots. And that maybe by trying to organize the computation a little more like it's organized in insects, we would get much better performance. Brooks' insect robots aren't intelligent the way we think of humans or even computers as being. Instead, they operate on patterns of behavior. When you turn them on, they're brainless. But with each step they take, they learn how to adapt to their environments. Rather than having a standard central controller, these robots have separate layers of behaviors that are independent but which communicate. No advanced behavior can start unless the simpler ones are up and running. When I first started talking about these ideas, uh, the only good thing going for me was I had videotapes of robots really doing things that other robots weren't doing. Otherwise, it would have been dismissed as a total flake, and probably would have been a total flake. Um, but because I had some performance, people looked at it and thought, well, maybe there's something there. But there was still a lot of uh, arguments with me and a lot of resistance. Now, over time, people who actually build robots have generally come to accept this approach at the low level aspects of controlling a robot. And it's become the standard way to operate. Unlike Whitaker, Brooks is not an engineer. His specialty is building brains. The robot's bodies are made by his colleagues and students at MIT. But like Whitaker, Brooks is ambitious and not opposed to making money. Yes, yes. Brooks is now chairman of IS Robotics, the bottom-up version of Red Zone. Um, how are the new tracks going? I guess uh, we just... Virtually everyone on staff is an MIT alumnus. They all share the dream of putting a robot in every living room. This week or next week, we'll get that set. But right now, many of their robots are paid for by the people who brought you duct tape and the internet, the United States military. The IS concept is to build swarms of small, inexpensive robots that can cover terrain too dangerous for troops to enter. This minesweeper is designed to be carried by soldiers into combat zones. The controls are strictly supervisory. The machine finds its way through the world in the same brainless fashion as Brooks' insect robot. Ariel is an underwater minesweeper built for the Navy. The idea is that before soldiers hit the beach, dozens of these robots will march in and sacrifice themselves on enemy booby traps. Ariel's body was based on a crab. If currents throw it about, it can operate upside down. IS also sells versions of the Genghis robot to labs around the world. The original Genghis launched the insect robot revolution. It was built by Colin Angle, a one-time grad student of Brooks who is now head of IS. Angle and Brooks believe the entertainment market could provide the monetary push that commercial robotics needs. Much as computer games helped finance the microprocessor boom, a must-have robot toy could fuel the next high-tech revolution. This robot baby doll might be the start of something big. So the, the doll is capable of uh, sensing lots of different interactions. Before it gets too upset and really all it wants to do is nap and eat, we can demonstrate some of these things. Like, um, he likes to play patty cake. He, he can... Uh, he, he's, he's just singing a song that he, he sings when he plays patty cake. And he, he likes... Uh, he's, 
you can see he's kind of like that. He also likes to bounce. But if, of course, bouncing the baby like I'm doing also is very tiring for the baby. So if I keep, if as long as I keep doing it, he'll be in a good mood. But if I stop like I did, he's going to very, very rapidly get upset. A crash. <laughs> So we should give him his bottle rod. Why don't you yeah. demonstrate that? Yes, he's, he's not being real happy right now. Oh, that's better. That's much better. Well, we, we've instrumented we've instrumented the doll with a number of different sensors. Like inside the bottle, the body, there's um, a, a ball in a cage, and we can sense where that ball is and where it's moving, and we can detect rhythms. So we use that to determine rocking and orientation. And if Rod was to hold it upside down, it really doesn't like that. Um, and it's gonna start, it'll, it'll fairly quickly start to, cr to cry. And um, so that, that puts in a really bad mood. We, we really did upset it by holding it upside down because it's got this, these various drives that need to be satiated and, and um, certain uh, emotions that get excited by both good things and bad things. I'll give uh, it a hug. Sorry. And the, the hugging sort of uh, lets it get a little happier. It's a very reassuring and, and, um, and comforting sort of thing. So you can see he, we've, we've improved. We've improved his, his uh, mood measurably by giving it a little TLC here. In robotics, a lot of us feel like we've been cheated by Hollywood, in that Hollywood has shown robots doing things that we don't have any possible capability of doing with our robots right now. So people are disappointed when they see our real robots. Um, on the other hand, I'm more optimistic now than I was five years ago that we're going to eventually catch up with Hollywood and, and maybe before too long, maybe even my, in my lifetime, be doing a few things that, that Hollywood hasn't thought of just yet. Like what? Oh, I hadn't thought of them either. <laughs> Leave it as a mystery. <laughs>